Hello everyone and welcome to the 2021 Art National Honor Society induction. My name is Bella Cadis and I will be your mistress of ceremonies this evening. I want to first thank everyone for coming, especially with this being such a crazy year. Despite all the struggle we's, struggles we've been through and the hurdles we've had to overcome, we are here today to appreciate the things we have accomplished this year. Art National Honor Society has been working on several projects and I'd like to take a moment to talk about them. We are currently in the process of completing three murals. This has taken a long time and with our members, along with the help of our new inductees, we are making great progress. Before we begin the formal induction, I want to welcome a, fe a fellow member, Monina Tosi, to start us off with a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, a prayer for artists. Bless the creators, O God of creation, who by their gifts make the world a more joyful and beautiful realm. Through their labors, they teach us to see more clearly the truth around us. In their inspiration, they call forth wonder and awe in our own living. In their hope and vision, they remind us that life is holy. Bless all who create in your image, O God of creation. Pour your spirit upon them that their hearts may sing and their works be fulfilling. Amen. Thank you, Manina. The next person I want to invite up is a member who will be speaking to you today about her experience, not only in the art program, but also at BG as a whole. Please help me by welcoming senior Sh Charles Wong to the podium. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cheryl Wong, and I'm an international student from Hong Kong who transferred to BG two years ago. I cannot believe that I've already studied in BG for almost three years, and here we are, so close to graduation. When I was thinking about the questions that people usually ask me, do you ever regret coming to BG, coming to America? My answer is always no. Here in this community, I not only received the best experience, but also friendship, especially being part of the art community, being part of NHS, and an APR student. I participated in different projects that I've never tried before, like painting the mural, sketching giant silhouettes. I never had this kind of opportunity in school before I came to America. Being here made me realize that other than just studying in school, we can all have fun in school. We can all experience many more different things that we enjoy. It's like a way to spend more time on our hobbies or to figure out what it is that we like the most, to develop a hobby. In NHS, I did not do 100 projects, but even one, project made me realize that the fun in art, what it is I want to do and how much I was learning. Therefore, I found out that art is the path I've picked for my future. It was not a decision I made all of a sudden in the morning when I woke up. It was a little by little from all the little pieces of experience that I have. When I decided I'm going to take the portfolio honors class last year and APR class this year, I think that was when everything started. People said deadlines are tough. Why would all of us art students still take the classes even though it might not be part of our future? People also ask, why would you guys waste extra leisure time on creating art pieces? Honestly, I enjoy it. I enjoy making every art piece is perfect, even though spending all my time in it. I guess the best feeling is after catching up with the deadlines, perfecting every artwork, the feeling of finally having everything done gave all of us satisfaction. I believe at some point, we are all proud of our achievements. Especially during this rough year with COVID, there are a lot of limitations on everything. We all get disappointed with how things went, but I guess it is the little happiness from APR that kind of kept me going. In APR, we did not just sit there and draw, we complement on each other's artwork, give each other suggestions, and I guess it became part of daily conversations. Asking how many pieces we've done, which one are we working on, everything was like how it used to be without a mask on. The mask did not stop us from communicating, enjoying our last year together. On the other hand, I think it's a mask that made, our, made us treasure our time together, that made this an ordinary year ordinary, like how it used to be. Witnessing all of us making progress, growing up together for our made us all amazed and proud of what we have achieved. From being not certain about my college major to deciding to be an art major was a step-by-step -step progress that I've never imagined what it has become today. I encourage everyone not to hesitate about participating in activities that you're interested in, 
because you, ne you will regret not trying and regret missing the chance. There's no harm in trying. Like being in NHS, I discover more possibilities in art. And of course, there are more yet to be discovered. I believe many of you felt the same as me or are going to experience the same thing in the future. Do not panic. Everyone is going to be the best of themselves. I want to say thank you to all the teachers, friends, and my family who helped me through the past two years. The pandemic might have been difficult, but I believe that we will all get through this. I wish everyone healthy and had the best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charles, for such an ins um, inspiring speech. Now it is time to announce and welcome all of our new members. Last year during the seniors induction, we were all in lockdown and could not complete many of the traditions that set this induction apart. This year, we will be calling all members to give them a symbolic offering and perform the ceremonial painting. To start this process, please give a warm welcome to senior Kate Messer, who will be our announcer for this section of the induction. Hi, everybody. Um, so uh, a lot of artists would say that a piece of art is never really finished, and conceivably, one could work on a piece of art for an entire lifetime. In keeping in line with that symbolism and as a part of um, our formal induction, our members will each take their turn making their mark on a canvas started in our first induction ceremony many years ago. This canvas will continue to represent the constant work and progress in this great art program at Bishop Girton High School. So as I call your names, inductees, I will request that last year's inductees please come forward to make your mark. Uh, Charlene Amarello. I don't think she's here today, right? Yeah, okay. Um, Molly O'Keefe. Next up, I'd like to welcome Stephanie Coulomb. Next is Rishika Dokula, but I do not believe she's here with us today. Um, Madison Dubay. to invite Isabella Cadis. Next, I'd like to invite up DJ Omagroso. Next up, Adam Terrian. Next up, 
Next up, Monina Tossi. Next up, Cheryl Zwang. That concludes our last year's inductees, and to welcome the new inductees, as I call your name, please come forward and make your mark. First, we have Molly Arell. Next, I'd like to have Maggie Fitzgerald. Next, I'd like to invite up Sarah Hotz. Next, I'd like to have up Julia Johnson. Next, I'd like to have up Colleen Mon. Next, I'd like to invite Jenny Pham. She not here today. Yeah. Well, not here today, but here in spirit. Um, Brittany Sayag. Next, Dylan Stewart. <laughs> Next, Caroline Sullivan. She's not here. Uh, Mo Thompson. <laughs> and 
And finally, Kathleen Messer. Thank you, Kate, and thank you all members for partaking in this tradition. The next speaker, unlike all before her, is not a student from BG. Every year we invite a guest who works in an art-related field, and this year we want to welcome Lisa Page. Lisa graduated high school in 1999 and is a 2007 graduate of the New Hampshire Institute of Art, holding a BFA in painting. Her love for art and love for helping others brought her into the field of nursing, a degree that she completed in 2010. While it is not her main source of income, art has always been a part of her life. In more recent years, she has turned from painting to embroidery, drawing with thread. Let us welcome Lisa as our speaker today and thank her for all of her courageous commitment as a frontline worker. Without further ado, please let me welcome Lisa Page. I graduated from Nashua High, so like the enemy. So, but <laughs> a long time ago before you were all even alive. Uh, but I was also in the Art Honor Society. Oh wait, yeah, you have to help me with this part. I'm like technologically elderly. Do I just hit present? This doesn't really match, but th this is just my artwork, and I'm just going to talk. It doesn't really go together. You don't have to pay that much attention. All right. So uh, from the time I was little, I always knew that I was an artist, because, you know, you kind of know. You're a weird little kid. Um, but that, those powers of observation that you hone as the years go on uh, can be used in a lot of different ways. So I initially thought, okay, here we go. Wait, Amy, what's the button? Just the, the arrow. The next arrow, yes. God bless you. <laughs> OK, so I initially thought I'm just going to be painting my whole life, but then uh, I started making these things eventually. Um, so I went to school, got my master's in, or my uh, bachelor's in painting, and worked at the art college for a number of years, uh, and realized I just felt like I wanted to be doing more. So went to nursing school, so now I have both of those skills. But after doing uh, painting for so long, I got really burnt out on it, kind of got burnt out on the art scene itself, and uh, just put it away for a while. And just a few years ago, I was kind of fiddling with some thread and started drawing with them. And now uh, I do this as my kind of side thing, but I've had a number of shows and I just sold a bunch of work. Anyway, so they're kind of random objects that I choose to do. Sandwiches and molars apples and whatnot. Um, but the medium itself kind of came around to meaning something to me. You think of something sort of nostalgic when you see these things. It's very handcrafted. They're, uh, you know, you used to see them in your grandmother's house. But they're kind of uh, not things that you would normally be nostalgic about. So it's kind of preemptive nostalgia about just your everyday kind of flim flam, the objects that are around you in life. So at first I was kind of terrible at this, but then I just kind of started working on them. Two space, two feet. Uh, yeah, so I think I really got stuck on the idea that I needed to be a painter because I identified as a painter. I graduated as a painter. I sold out my whole senior show. I, you know, was in galleries, but I just, I was done with it. I was tired of painting. I was, I knew what I could do with it. I'd ex like, touch the edges of what I was going to be interested in. And I just was like, I don't feel like I'm an artist anymore. I don't really care. So I, yeah. And plus, I have little kids. And if you try to paint around little kids, it's a bad idea. You're going to waste a lot of money on paint. <laughs> um, so this stuff, though, I can do kind of why I'm watching Frozen for the 13,000th time. Um, oh, no cigarettes on the can. Um, 
but yep, so most of these are sold. Uh, and I had a show in Rochester. I'm going to have a show in P-Town this summer. I have a show this fall in Portsmouth. And then I'm starting a series kind of at the end of this. Those were the kind of beginning ones, and these are sort of more recent ones. Um, and I kind of just, you know, as artists, you kind of are always drifting off and not paying attention to what's going on around you and staring at, like, you know, that bowl of spaghetti or whatever and just kind of observing it. So really just whatever I'm like, that would be kind of fun to draw. I've been doing. And weirdly enough, they all sort of speak to somebody in a way. Like, you know, somebody will be like, oh, I have this long story about a shrimp, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, they're like, I want to buy the shrimp. So the everyday objects, oh, there's a the shrimp. Everyday objects in your life just kind of start to mean something when you're surrounded by them all the time. And then eventually, some of these things are going to become like archaic, you know? Oh, this is this is a jacket I did. This is an M.C. Escher print that I really love called the Drowned Cathedral. So I did this on the back of my jacket. And so this is how I do them. I like freehand draw them and then kind of do an outline and start filling it in and building it up. A lot of times, so this isn't the normal process for embroidery. Most of the time it's like one single thread and you do a very strict pattern and people I'm just, I've always been a messy painter. I'm a messy embroideress. So it's, uh, it's kind of a little bit different. So I kind of um, build up the color in the same way too. You can see that this is a, you know, like for instance, this is a metal object and you would just think like you would be using kind of a monochromatic color scheme. But in order to make it pop, you can see that there's a little orange underneath there. And you have to kind of build up the warm tones that you don't think are there, but once you're like, looking for a while, you realize that if this was just all one tone, just black and white or whatever, it wouldn't have the same life to it because it's reflecting all the colors around you and you're not living in a cave. So there's warm light too. And this is uh, some steak that I did. And that's Grace Jones, who none of you know, but she's, fam she's a famous model from the 80s. She was amazing. Uh, this is one that's going to P-Town, it's a bruised banana. Uh, and then, yeah, so sometimes I'll do ones where uh, it's something I have to pull up the images off the internet, like Grace Jones. I obviously don't know that woman. Um, but then other times I'm just doing them from life. And I find that anytime I'm drawing for life, from life, you get a much better image because um, you can really see all the angles from it. Oh, and this is the last one. I'm doing a series called Pray for Me, and it's going to be all these sort of around sin and uh, guilt. And this is St. John the Baptist's head on sushi fabric. Anyway, so yeah, even though I'm a nurse, you can't you can't leave behind your own DNA. So I'm still an artist, and I can't help it. So now I just have too many careers. <laughs> and I uh, wish you all luck. And that's that. <laughs> nice and speedy. Thank you, Lisa, for speaking with us today. With that, we conclude our induction tonight. I invite Molly O'Keefe up to wrap up with some closing remarks. Oh, where is it? Hello, everyone. My name is Molly, and I just wanted to say a couple things before ending our induction ceremony tonight. I want to start by thanking Lisa for her wonderful presentation and, her, and present her with this gift as our token of appreciation for being here. Now I would like to congratulate and thank both new, the new and veteran inductees for being here tonight. To the returning seniors, we never got a real ceremony last year, so this COVID modified somewhat in-person version is something that we will definitely remember and we thank everyone who put it together. To the new inductees, Congratulations for your hard work and flexibility and all that you have had to deal with. I think I can speak for everyone when I say that I hope that you can have a fully in-person and non-COVID NAHS experience next year. I would like to thank Ms. B and Ms. D for not only organizing the ceremony, but also for their dedication and time they put into NAHS. We would not have been able to start all of the murals and projects that we have without their help. Thank you for being so supportive with all of our crazy ideas. Thank you to everyone who joined us tonight, and we appreciate your support and presence. 
If you are a virtual guest tonight, feel free to stick around to view the virtual slideshow of NAHS member artwork. Present guests may view the artwork in, displayed in the lobby of the school and also join us for some socially distanced refreshments located in the CAF. I again thank everyone for joining us and congratulations to everyone inducted.